talked about Article 5, and he said, Shh, everyone sit down, and he, oh, that's better, that's right. So, we said that you can't have independence movement. Now, the problem is that everywhere in the museum, so you can't, Italy can't separate. Why is that so important? No, no. We're talking about Article 5, you know. So, um, okay. why, why is that so important? Why is that so important? To our founding fathers, it was very important to say there are no independent movements. Why? Why not allow them? Why not allow them? What's so harmful about Piemonte becoming independent? Maybe. Or Leg and Nord becoming Maybe. making the North independent. Why not? Why is that so yes? Because if uh, we came we we came in the Italy in uh, eighteen sixty one there is no reason to divide the... If, if people want to, want to divide it, why not? Mm, yes, but uh, if not... There is in, in this case, uh, every... Uh, 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 um, a pro, 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 provincia yes. can, uh, can demand uh, independ independence. Oh, yes, yeah, why can't they? Yeah, but they can't. According to a Republican, who named it is in Why can't they demand independence? Because if it, it divides, uh, it will be not be any more Italy. Yeah, but well, why, what's wrong with that? Another country. Uh, true, true, true. But why, why was it so important to say, let's, who named it is in we can't even discuss it? Why not? What do we see? Okay, what we see in, in uh, independence movements. Does it cause tension? Yes. 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 Does it sometimes cause wars? Yes. yes. Lots of tensions, lots of wars. Why? Because always, if we divide, we saw the tensions with Brexit. If we divide, there's going to be a lot of arguments anyway. Even, the, even whether we should divide could create tensions and wars. If it's discussable, there will be a movement pro and a movement against. They will create huge tensions. If you do win independence, let's imagine Piemonte has decided to become independent. What will be the problems? Who will pay the pensioners? But not the central government, but then Kim Montesi will say, well, we put a lot of money into the central government, we want some of that money. With Scotland, you know, uh, uh, there will be big discussions about who has the oil, who has trident and nuclear weapons, who owns, you know, uh, these types of things. The pensions that have been invested in the centre. Who has the debt? The debt of Italy. How much does Piemonte must it pay? In Scotland we had an independent re referendum for independence. There was the Shetland Islands are very pro-England and they have oil. If they vote pro-England and Scotland votes independence England could say we will defend Shetland Island's right to be English and we will send warships there to defend it. You see what I mean? Once you start disintegrating, where does the discussion stop? It doesn't stop, that's the problem. And the only, really, the ultimate arbiter becomes, because there's no rules, the ultimate arbiter becomes who is the strongest. How do you know who's the strongest until you've tested it and gone to war? This is the problem. Often it ends up in wars and conflicts and tensions and people fighting each other. But even if that doesn't happen, you will divide communities. 
We've seen that again with Brexit and in lots of uh, examples. People don't have rights now. So the, the, maybe my friend in England's got a French wife. Yes? Living in England. She has no more rights. She doesn't have a right. She's got, she's got a kid. But she's got no, no rights to, to be there. Etc. I mean, will will they will you be able to visit in Piemonte? Will we be able to visit our our family in in Liguria or in Lombardia? You know, if they decide, you know, you need a visa, will they recognise your driving license? Will you be able to get a job or continue your job in Lombardia? Independence movement means a lot of tension for not much reason. <laughs> okay? Unless there is a, a good case for independence. If you don't share the same values, if you've got a dictator and he's very abusive, or she's very abusive, it's better to be independent. If it's something like China and, and another country that has a very different value system and they're very democratic, Maybe there's a justification. But I think they were trying to create a situation where all parts of the uh, Republic could express themselves, had inalienable rights, there would be no reason to, to divide. Okay, so independence, building walls, building barriers, is against human, human progress. Yeah, we've always come together, globalised, try to open up. That's part of our progress. Yes? There were some uh, conflicts and uh, some, uh, some problems in uh, 1217 uh, in Catalonia when there, when there was a referendum for uh, independence. Oh, really? Yes, in uh, okay. Right. Okay, I yeah, it's had in history, so it's in Spain. Yeah, sorry. Yes, it's uh are you talking about the recent ones? Yes, the the quantum Yeah, it's some of the years ago. And and it was an illegal referendum. It was an illegal referendum and the leaders were, were convicted. They fled abroad and they were convicted. In Spain, yeah, that is, it, was, it was illegal in Spain. But it's illegal here. You can't have a referendum to, to split it up Italy because of this article. And very good reason too. I think uh, you know independence, unless there's a serious justification, really is just disintegration. It's the opposite of what Europe's about. Europe's about integration. It's about getting rid of frontiers, getting rid of barriers between peoples, and coming together as a community. It would just damage the community. That's that's what uh, independence is. If, if, if there's no real justification, you're just damaging your community. Uh, so they have very good, anyone think of a good reason for independence? Maybe, the, you know, I mean, the, you could say the North works so much harder than the South. That's been a justification for Italian uh, want, desire to, for, of the North, the Lega North, called uh, Roma Ladrona, and they said all the money is going there, etc. There is maybe uh, this type of justification. Um, but even then, I mean, uh, you know, you see countries like Germany come together with very poor. East Germany was very poor, came together. It did Germany a lot of good. It, it was, it, yeah, they had to invest a lot of money, but they had money to invest. Um, it's more about the system that's wrong rather than uh, the separation was needed. Yeah, Sophia, what did you want to say? Oh, who put their hand up? 
Okay. So you could have an economic argument, but even then, it's it doesn't really. It's not in the interests. You know, when we look at East Germany and West Germany, West, West Germany was very rich. It needed to invest a lot of money. It was an opportunity to have East German uh, build them up, and then obviously the East Germans become richer and can purchase more and more from West Germany, and everyone benefits. So, all right. Then it continues, it recognises and promotes local autonomies. <coughs> why, why does it say that? What does that mean? What does that mean? Yes, it is that in Italy, there are, uh, the, the constitution recognises the different uh, um, regioni, and these uh, regioni in English is uh, Region. Reasons yes. and these reasons as uh, have some, some powers have uh, are representative that you can uh, take some uh, some laws for yes. example and uh, there are also in uh, not in the in the five article but uh, in, in other article in which uh, we say that there are uh, five uh, regions that have a particular uh, good special state special state yes. yes. In fact, now if we go to 117, uh, part 417, in fact, in fact, we can see this, this separation. Basically, basically, this means this this autonomy of the of the local entities, not just the regions, also the province, also the communes. They must be autonomous, and it means that the local politicians can make decisions for the local areas. It means all the power is not concentrated in the parliament. And we can see this come into action also in Article 117. It gives the state, which is the parliament, uh, he's talking about the parliament here, um, the, the possibility to make laws on certain very important national prerogatives, like immigration, uh, foreign policy, etc. But also the regions have the option of making some uh, laws on some competencies. So the regions can make laws uh, for certain things and the, the, the state or the parliament for other things on certain, certain matters. And also the communes can make laws on certain matters. This is very important because we want democracy to be close to the citizen. We don't want you know, before this uh, distribution of power, this devolution of power, if I wanted to open a shop, local shop, I would have to write to the minister and he would have to agree we need a tobacco in Via Garibaldi because, you know, he would know the local culture, what's needed, etc. So we do, we did want, this was very important, some things obviously need a national decision, like, for example, immigration or um, foreign policy, which are more for everybody, or the national policy is necessary. Other things can have a local policy. So you've got exclusive competences for the parliament and exclusive competences for regions, but also for communes. For example, the communes can decide parking or markets, whether we can have a market in this road or not. The, lo the national government doesn't decide that. The regions can have shared competencies. For example, schools are shared competencies. The, the parliament decides on recruitment 
of teachers, what's necessary to, to be a teacher, does the concourse need, etc. But the local region, the regions, can decide, do we need more Chinese or more, I don't know, ec economics, etc. because of the area, maybe the area needs a bit more Chinese because there's a, a, a business that does a lot of work with the Chinese. So they can decide what are the indirizzi, the, the, the types of schools that uh, are in the territory, the local territory. So we can imagine, yeah, it's really important, isn't it, that we have local decisions. Really, we're able to express, firstly, we'll be able to express our specific um, local culture, which might be different from Milan, Turin, we've got a different uh, people, different will, if you like. So it's very important that's expressed locally. And then we've, we've also got a national will, which is expressed by the parliament. So that, that's what they mean. But when they're talking about um, autonomy of local bodies, we're really thinking about uh, the will of the people locally being expressed. We want this is the same in, in um, the European Union. It's exactly the same. We call it subsidiarity. There's a rule. There's a rule in the in the European Union that says. Uh, it's a principle, a principle of subsidiarity, which means anything that can be done by a lower level of authority should be. So, for example, if we want to build a, a, a local road, it should be decided and, and organised locally. The European Union won't be discussing it. The European Parliament won't be discussing it. It's only necessary to go up a level if obviously uh, it's affecting more people, you know, like for example, um, maybe the values, the European values, are, must be protected on a European level. We can't have some, you know, parts of Europe that aren't democratic or or don't respect human rights, for example. So they're considered. Uh, uh, a, a highest, highest possible level. But we've got this principle of subsidiarity, which is exactly the same, really. Um, and that is democratic, isn't it? Um, if I think of England, or UK, United Kingdom, we don't... The first part we've, we've spoken about, we don't really have that idea that you, we can't divide. We can if we want. Like I said, UK is very liberal, and if Scotland wants, it can go. There's no, you know, constitutional uh, ban on, on, on Scotland becoming independent. But also, we do allow a lot of autonomy, naturally. Um, we have got, we've got the Scottish Parliament or Welsh Parliament, but I think naturally the government uh, or the, 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 the way the English are anyway is they don't control so much. We don't have so many rules anyway. Uh, you know, Italy produces thousands and thousands more rules, more laws than the British every year. So there's a lot of control going on anyway. But I think generally we, we, we have that autonomy built into our culture, that idea that you know, we, are, we are allowed to be a bit free. And implement the fullest measure of administrative decentralization in those services which depend on the state. What does that mean? Well, how is that different from this political autonomy, from most local autonomy, and influence the fullest measure of administrative decentralisation? 
What, what's that mean? So it's not just political um, autonomy. There's administrative decentralisation. That means basically, again, it's about being closer to the people. So, for example, you do Alter Danza School of Lavora, and it's not the minister that decides what exactly you do. It's, it's the teachers, maybe me, or another teacher can think, you, you could go to the museum of the Egyptian museum. So the decision is decided at the lowest possible level, it's the most decentralized level. Um, why is that important? Why is it so important that? Anyone? The teachers are easier and tough. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yes, absolutely. But um, also closer to the needs of the people. I think how the hell would, uh, I don't know, the, the minister know exactly what is good for, for you as an alternanza of Swallow the Ball, yes? I think we've got to really try to make decisions in the administration which fit you the best possible. And the more decentralised, the more we're able to do that. The centralised, the more centralised, the more we're going to get very standardised, distorted um, decisions. Um, Again, England is very good at this anyway. Decentralisation, for example, a good example, <coughs> your, your recruitment for teachers is very centralised. You do a national concourse set by the ministry and everybody does the same concourse. In England, if you want a job as a, as a, as a teacher, you go to the president, you go to the headmaster, you say, can I come join your teacher, your school. He'll look at your CV and he'll say yes or no. So he's making the decision for his school. For the, even if it's a public school, for a public school. But he sees it as his school. Yes? So we are very decentralised. Um, naturally. Each body, each uh, local authority is really operating, each school is really operating an autonomous strategy. Maybe we do have centralisation for exams, which is different than here. You know, uh, your profs give you your marks, but some things we do see as being, you know, we've got to check people are of the same standards. But generally, most of the decisions are not made centrally by the ministry for public schools, for state schools. They're made by the, the headmaster. Um, so it's very decentralised. Okay. And then it says the Republic adapts the principal methods of its legislation to the requirements of autonomy and decentralisation. So any laws which will be made, will be made with these principles in mind, that they need to be as autonomous and as decentralised as possible, as permits. You know, if we're talking about immigration, we need a national policy, it can't be autonomous. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so, right, thank you. Um, any questions? No. Alright, turn the thingy off.